and shall gently lead those that are with you. Good morning. Psalm chapter 40, verse 2, it says, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Then in verse 3, he said, And he put a new song in my heart, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and shall fear and shall trust in the Lord. In lesson 14, we're going to be talking about the voices, uh, voices that are going on, the voices uh, that distract us and pull us away from God. And uh, we got to be careful whenever we start talking about voices and hearing voices um, because people will be shipping us off to the funny farm with the guys with white coats if we're not too careful. Um, but we talk about this idea of voices. And we're going to talk this morning um, for the most powerful voice uh, that I believe is facing our, cul our culture and our nation. And that is number one. It's uh, a music is the world's most powerful voice. Now you're probably wondering what exactly are these voices are. Perhaps you figured out, honestly, um, you could answer the question in your own conscience before God. God, what are the voices of this world? How is the devil communicating in our world today? Rock music? Yes. Country music? Yes. Pop, R&B, jazz, hip-hop, alternative? Yes, yes, yes again. Christian rock? Yes, even there. Christian pop? Yes. Um, Christian rap? Yes. Christian alternative? Yes. So, well, what about uh, TV and movies and, and talk radio and video games and newsstands and the internet? Yes, 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 all, all of the above. Now, before you have a coronary and start defending every one of your personal favorite music and entertainment forms, let's put, put uh, pull back the cultural blinders that are on so many Christians' eyes today and let's let the Holy Spirit guide us into all truth. If your heart is already resisting um, this whole lesson and the voices of what we're talking about, let's stop for a moment and ask ourselves, whose voice is speaking to our heart? There are many voices that the devil is using today. I want to focus on the one that I think is the loudest. Um, a careful study of culture is going to prove that music is the leading device that spirits not of God are using to communicate to the hearts of uh, human beings today. I'm not saying that all music is evil. I am saying it is a tool of communication that for the most part has been distorted by our enemy to damage the heart. It has been twisted and shaped in a multitude of ways that negatively impacts the human heart. I'm not even saying that all forms of secular music are wrong. I am saying, this is letter A, all music has spiritual significance in the heart. It it has spiritual significance in the heart. Letter A. This leads us to letter B. All music, it is all either moral or immoral. Music is never neutral. Um, it always has moral and immoral implications. I realize that I'm in the Christian minority that's going to say this. I believe that it can easily be proven that music in itself, especially without words, is spiritual in its very nature. And therefore, it has either good or evil effects upon your spiritual life. No musical styles are all moral. That means either good nor bad. They cannot be. Popular Christian thought says, God likes all kinds of music. After all, he made all kinds of music, and it's all good. The problem with this is this ignorant and well-intentioned thought and this statement, it completely removes the human influence from the equation. Yes, God made music. But then he placed it into the hands of men. In the most basic sense, a single note, a single note, um, oh, a single note or a musical tone might be considered all moral before it even reaches the creative process of the human touch. Yet once it enters the hand of a man, a spiritual being, and that man shapes it into a musical message, even without words, that message most certainly takes on moral or immoral implications. Saying music all moral would be like saying color is all moral. True, you can point to red or blue. In fact, even behind me, we can point to the white golf ball that's sitting right here. Uh, we, can, we can point to the red and the blue. We can point to the different colors. Uh, and intrinsically, tr intrinsically, red and blue, neither one are evil or bad. Um, they're colors. However, those colors become a message a photo, a work of art that can either be good or bad. 
saying that all styles of music are acceptable to God would be like saying all kinds of photographs, all kinds of pictures are acceptable to God. All paintings, all colors, all, all kinds of clothing, all kinds of beverages, oh, those are all okay with him too. It's a lie that Christendom has swallowed hook, line, and sinker. Let her see. Yet the secular world understands the power of music. The secular world at large uh, understands quite clearly the power of music, alone with no words. Um, it, there's a website, if you take time to go to it, or you have the few minutes you'd like to while you're sitting there quarantined at home, it's called Muzak. Uh, they develop music programs to get people to move through businesses and restaurants. An interesting study on their page, uh, we're not going to go into today, but they understand, uh, the secular world understands that music shapes emotions, thoughts, and desires. In other words, to shape the heart. Music affects behavior radically because at its very core, it's spiritual form of communication, a language of the heart that when, um, when heard, translates into a thought, a desire, emotion, and a choice. Did you get it? When you listen to music, your heart is being affected. It's a law of nature like breathing oxygen or being held down by gravity. Music transforms the heart. You cannot escape it. You can't listen to music and merely be entertained. You're being molded. Now, the enemy wants you to believe that music and other forms of media are merely entertainment. Once you cross that bridge, anything goes. And for anything goes for God too. In other words, we reason that we can take any music style and make it Christian. Yet not even Hollywood falls for this deception. You can never convince John Williams, uh, the famous Hollywood composer, uh, that any style of music could be scary, any style could be victorious, that any style could be seductive. No, uh, in interviews um, that you can actually watch on YouTube and uh, listen to some of his testimonial, um, uh, the man ingeniously knows exactly what instruments, what chords, what rhythms to use if he wants to make somebody feel scared, creepy, happy, triumphant. In fact, music is much, uh, very much the emotional interpretation of what you're experiencing at any given moment. When we watch a movie, uh, the composer of the score has literally implanted emotional responses um, dictating your heart on how to feel. It all happens quite subconsciously, especially when you're wrapped up in the storyline. Music communicates within your heart, telling you how to feel and how to respond to what you're uh, experiencing. It's pretty amazing because if you go to watch um, a sports movie where there's going to be a victorious ending, um, the music, whenever you watch Mighty Ducks, makes you want to get up and stand on the couch and yell and cheer uh, because they just won the gold. Um, why do we understand that in the context of a movie? But somehow we divorce it from the ideas of our minds when we think about the radios in our car, uh, the stereos in our home, to our music on our cell phone, um, to our MP3 players, or whatever we use to listen to, to music. Um, why do we reason that the music of this world is acceptable as long as it has Christian lyrics? If indeed we understand that music alone communicates so loudly with the heart, if music always creates a heart response, then music is always either good or evil. Every musical style, every variation, sends a different message to the heart. We won't spend much time on the philosophy of biblical music, but I would argue to you. And there's another book that, if you're interested in the study on the philosophy of biblical music, I have a couple of resources. Please contact us through our website, Northwoods Baptist church.org. Um, but um, we won't be spending much time on this, but uh, I would urge you to recognize the power of music, the influence that it has upon the heart. It's huge. The lyrics, of course, they matter, but they are secondary to the style on the impact of the heart. The style creates the primary emotional heart response. Consider 1 Samuel chapter 16. When David played his heart before Saul, uh, the evil spirit that was troubling Saul fled away. What a powerful example of the spirits of this world responding to godly music. That is letter, letter D. The spirits of this world run from godly music. That's the kind of music I want. In fact, give me a truckload of it. Can you understand this? Uh, music actually causes the forces of the enemy to flee. Conversely, there must be a kind of music that makes him feel at home as well. There are other voices speaking in the world today. Volumes could be written about them. There are millions of ways that Satan is trying to get his message into your uh, heart, his movies, magazines, video games, uh, TV, so on and so on. The list could be enormous um, as we look at it. Each voice is a vehicle of communication with the heart. 
And if you stop and consider the big picture, you will see that we live in a media-crazed culture. Uh, e. Music and culture is everywhere. Uh, continually speaking. Music is always on. It's always speaking. It's always being heard um, by the world. You cannot go to the mall without seeing music, without hearing music videos. You can't go to Walmart without hearing music. Uh, you can't go to the grocery store. You can't go anywhere. It's no matter where you turn, the voices never stop and they're seemingly everywhere. For instance, a recent study found uh, by the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development reported that teenagers who watched um, illicit content on their TV were twice as likely to be sexually active as those who didn't. It's amazing, uh, the amazing fact of the study was that the TV shows that only talked about illicit activity um, were just as influenced, just as influential as those who depicted it visually. Entire books could be written to verify that television and movie, movies are huge contributors uh, to the corruption in young lives. Music is, could be referred to as the 500 pound gorilla in the room. Um, all of the world's voices uh, simply because it is so persuasive, uh, persuasive. Consider this, you can sit down and play a video game for 30 minutes and the whole time be affected by spiritually harmful music without even realizing it. Uh, let me let me just kind of hum this tune, see if you can identify it. The majority of the people that are watching this video can say, oh, I know what that's from. And if you don't know what it's from, it's from Mario Brothers. But nobody's Nobody determined to play Mario to begin with to say, I want to play Mario so I can learn the Mario Brothers song. That's not why we play the game. Uh, but the song is, is ingrained in our head and it elicits a response. Um, the whole time we're being affected spiritually without even realizing it. Uh, you can watch a wonderful storyline in the family film, yet the entire back line, uh, they're playing rock music through the entire line throughout the story. That's subtle. That's persuasive. Parents, kids, beware of how the enemy tries to fill your hearts with corruption while he attempts to get you to look the other way. Also, music now is very portable. Uh, it's kind of funny because um, oh, in reading part of this book on our study, uh, it makes reference to, to Walkmans and cassette players that can now fit in your pocket, uh, when in reality, um, we have access to the world's entire library of music that we walk around with in our hands in the form of a cell phone. Um, it's just amazing how that no matter where we're at, you, there used to be days where you could go on a, a long drive down a country road or you could take a walk down a country road or walk down town and down the street and what you could hear is the sights and the sounds of the city that are there and everybody knew that if you're listening to radio that you had to have these big huge headphones on or you had to be carrying one on your shoulder and, and now they're so small they just fit right in the side of your ear and you can be permeated with this music no matter where you're at. Um, yeah, there is a good side to the advances of our modern world. You can now take biblically sound music with you everywhere you go. But no matter how mundane the surroundings, you can be communicating with God in song and allowing godly music to transform in your heart for good. It all depends on what spirit you're listening to. Um, those not of God or those or the spirit of God. Let me be clear. Worldly music is certainly not the sole instigator of spiritual problems, but it is huge agitator of them. Worldly music um, is pliable, takes is to a pliable young heart what gallons of gasoline is to a small spark. Where the water of God's grace should have quenched the problem and healed the heart, worldly music explodes into a raging inferno of destruction. Letter F. Worldly music takes a small heart problem and enlarges them. It's true of adults too, with the exception that children are more impressionable, um, like jello before it sets and concrete before it hardens. The ninth grade heart is more quickly to be addicted to these influences, and the destruction is more thorough. It's amazing to me whenever you start to think about people's favorite style of music and what they listen to, normally was the music that they listened to in high school and through high school. And I've always thought that was kind of fascinating, but really it's because through that time, you're being addicted to these influences that are permeating your life. Now, I'm not singing out one, singling out um, music among other corrupt voices, um, not because the others aren't dangerous, but because 
in people's life, this is one that seems to take a stronghold. It's one that's always there. Um, parents, parents of kids, of small kids, and parents of kids as they're growing older, keep in mind that um, music is always there as a battle that's going to fight for the heart of your child. It's always there. Um, a teenager may have victory over lots of different things, but the voice of music is something that's still always there and always needs to be fought. Um, here's my question to you as we press on in this study. Do you value the spiritual condition of your heart more than you value the entertainment of the world's voices? If you do, let's continue on to number two, submitting my heart to God's voices. Number two, submitting my heart to God's voices. By now, you're probably wondering, okay, what styles are harmful and what styles are helpful? The answer to that question is a lot simpler than we realize. First, we must submit to God's word in this area. Though God's word is relatively silent on music styles, especially those that exist today, um, we must rely on biblical principles to guide us. Uh, musical styles are like clothing styles. They change all the time. They're constantly changing from culture to culture. Uh, music is a creative medium. It's always uh, being discovered and rediscovered, designed and redesigned. A lot like clothing. I am so thankful that I don't live in a time where there's three-piece suits. Um, we do still have the regular suits that we wear, but they're not double-breasted suits because I'm getting to wear it who would look more like a girdle uh, than it would a vest. So I I'm thankful that we don't live in that time. Um, and as style has changed in clothing, so does style change in music. Therefore, for God to try to pin down a style and detail them in the scripture would be very, very impractical. Uh, it'd be impractical for future generations uh, as the devices of men created newer and newer styles. Let's face it, uh, the most popular styles of music today hasn't really been around for very long. Similarly with clothing, God doesn't address specifics with dress, but rather principles. God says whenever you're dressed, your dress should be modest and distinct between male and female. Um, the, ex, for an example of that, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In, uh, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modern apparel. So in like manner, in similar manner, women adorn yourselves in, in uh, modest apparel. Men, be modest, stay modest. Uh, so don't let the fact that God doesn't address suits and ties, um, so that God doesn't address uh, skirts, uh, that God doesn't address sh short lengths, uh, if, since he... In the scripture, don't let that become reason to abuse the Christian liberty that God's given us. God gives principles that apply to our music very clearly. So what are they? Well, here's just a few. A. Our music should re reflect a new song after salvation. We read the verse at the very beginning, and he had put a new song in my heart, even praise to our God. And I love the next part. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Our song points people to him. It's a new song. It's a different song. A new song would be one that's different than those that you sang before you met Christ. When you came to Christ, he made you a new creature. Old things are passed away. You are no longer your own. You belong to God. And everything from your life's purpose to the color of your toothbrush should be at God's direction for his glory. That's why we were saved. A Christian is not permitted to have a, I want my MTV, and I know that that's way, way back, I want my own music my way attitude. God clearly says in Scripture that you belong to Him, and you should glorify Him in every area of your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, uh, where, uh, where, Whether ye eat uh, or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So our music ref should reflect a new song after salvation. The next one is B. Our music should be different from the world's music. Our music should be different from the world's music. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, this discounts most of the contemporary Christian movement, uh, the CCM movement, right off the top. Um, if we're going to be honest, most CCM artists are following conforming in close step with the world when it comes to their music style and their delivery. The pop Christian culture in America today is literally feeding off the world like a nursing calf. Rather than being a particular, a peculiar people who are different from the world, uh, we appear to actually envy the world so much that we are 
working overtime to make our Christianity just like it. Um, MSNBC recently posted a story on Christian nightclubs in America. And looking at the Christian nightclubs that are that are coming up across the country, an interview has profoundly disappointed um, portrait of the current Christian youth culture. These clubs are exactly like the world in every way, except for a few blatant issues. Drugs and alcohol, they're not prevalent. Um, the interviews boldly stated that we do not talk about God, and most of these teens don't even know this is a Christian club. One man was quoting, uh, quoted as saying, we're ready to talk about God when they're ready to talk about God. On the surface, that sounds noble, but it's rotten to the core. The Bible teaches us there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. In Romans chapter 3, uh, verse 11, apparently the Christian nightclubs are waiting for someone, to, or, or willing to let someone to spend eternity in hell just because they were never ready to talk about God. Jesus didn't give his life for a Christian nightclub. He did give his life for the church. And he commissioned the church to go and to teach, to preach the word, whether or not the world is ready to hear it. This brand of Christianity that walks so closely in step with the world offers no difference, except in the most basic moral concepts. To the news media and the secularist of today, Christianity appears to want what the world has, in which case we should want why should the world want Christianity if we're wanting what the world has? Conforming to the image of the world no way reaches the world. Let us see. Our music should be songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 says, Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Spiritual songs, uh, speaking to the heart about God in both words and style. Remember, it's not just the words that do the speaking, it's the style as well. Every song without words has three, dis three distinct parts, melody, harmony, and rhythm. Most of the world's music speaks to the flesh with ryth rhythms, and um, vulgarizes our human existence with sensuality. Putting Christian words to these rhythms doesn't change the spiritual and carnal message of the rhymes themselves. These rhymes stir up anger, bitterness, hatred, despair, depression, sensuality, and lust. Let's put it this way. Um, if... Uh, If uh, we have some weightlifters that are going to go lift weights and they go into the weight room and they get down underneath the bench press and they, they get down and they get ready to go and somebody says, hey, turn on that radio so I can get pumped up. And they walk over and they flip on the button to get them excited about playing and they turn it on and all of a sudden you hear, um, read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day. And you're like, change that channel, that's not going to pump me up. Well, that's just the thought there. Even if you change it to a, read your Bible, pray every day, whoa, it's still not going to do the same thing. It, well, it's still going to, to change because the song matters. The, the, the melody, the rhythm, it stirs up anger and it's bitter hatred, sensuality. It, it stirs you up. It emotionally stirs you. A spiritual song that the Spirit speaks would never take your heart or your body in that kind of a direction. Yet most of our popular music today, even that which claims to be Christian, does exactly those exact same things. Letter D, our music should be joyful. As a Christian, my music should be joyful because it's coming from the joy of the Lord. Psalms chapter number 98 verse 4 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, make a loud noise. Rejoice and sing praise. But we could go on and on, but I truly believe that God's Holy Spirit will guide you and will give you total freedom and interest into this area of life. But we've already read uh, 1 John chapter 4, 6. Uh, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us, whereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Uh, if you have a seeking and submissive heart, God's Holy Spirit will guide you into truth and away from error. Letter E, we must die to self and submit to God in our music choices. Just like anything else, we have to be willing to die to ourself and submit to God. Most Christians have a very self-centered, my way attitude when it comes to music. Yeah, I'll serve in this area. My music, don't touch it. That one's mine. Um, 
have a my way attitude. Our musical preferences and tastes become deeply entrenched in our lives like a favorite pet's areas of our hearts. We are reluctant to let God get too close to our comfort zone. We would rather just um, convert our favorite style of music to Christianity, Christianity than risk having God replace it with a brand new song. We have to look at the lifestyle that music produces. This is number three. What music produces in the heart? Probably the greatest indictment against any particular style of secular or Christian music is the lifestyle of those who immerse themselves in the music. For any style of music, look closely at those who live in that music, perform the music, and yes, even worship that music. Uh, letter A here. A person's lifestyle will always be, in part, a product of their music. A person's lifestyle is going to be, in part, a product of their music. Letter B. You cannot immerse yourself into a music style without being shaped by that style. You can't immerse yourself too heavily in a music style without your life being renovate, re, uh, reinvented and shaped by that style. It's another law of the universe. If you want to know what rap music produces, look at its worshipers. What do you mean by its worshipers? Those who follow, those who listen, those who respond to it. It produces violence, rage, anger, hatred, defilement, uh, defilement perversion, and, and violence of the worst kind. It's no coincidence that this music requires warning labels to parents. It is unthinkable that we have even Christianized rap music. Uh, we might as well have have had um, other Christian. We can have Christian alcohol or or um, Christian cigarettes. There's no way that a music style that produces such immoral and godless behavior can ever be Christianized. Can can be um, Christianized. Um, other musical styles. Uh, produce lust, immorality, loose living, sensuality, uh, adultery, um, home styles. Um, some styles produce despair, depression, self-absorption. Some styles produce altered state of consciousness to assist with new age and mysticism. Some, some styles contribute to Satan worship. Um, some contribute to sensual romance, some to carnal living. Just look at the product and you will find the answer. Every style produces its own product within the worshiper, regardless of whether there are Christian lyrics or not. You may argue that it's our flesh that produces these things, not the music. Truly, the flesh is where it begins. But I still contend that the music is a type of fuel that ignites the spark. Rather than transforming the heart of the image of Christ, let us see, carnal music enlarges and feeds the problem of the flesh until they are all-consuming. Against the grain of culture, there are some styles that do not produce any of the above. Given careful study, you're, you will not find greed, lust, anger, bitterness, or violence being produced by godly styles of music. You will find the fruit of the Spirit that is produced through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You will not find confusion, but rather peace. <laughs> wow, what a thought. This kind of music, it may not be your favorite style, but it will not conform you to the world. It will not conform your heart to the world. It will not uh, warp your spiritual senses. Letter D, godly music assists the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the point of godly music. This kind of music, it may not taste the same as the world's music, but it will produce a joyful heart, a healthy countenance, a peaceful life. Your fleshly uh, taste buds, you're going to reject it at first. Um, uh, it's going to sound uncool, <laughs> but not everything that that tastes bad, at least at first, is bad for you. And not everything that tastes good is good for you, especially when you're dealing with bait. We'll get back to this point, but hang on. First, uh, let's get a close-up glimpse of what's wrong with music and other similar voices whenever they don't affect our heart the right way. So as we look at this, we need to desire to listen to voices that's going to help us to walk closer in our relationship with God and deny those voices that wouldn't. The next lesson is submitting to the right spirit. How do we as God's people submit to the right spirit?